Reconstruction 101, September 7, 2020 by Anna Von writes. Our nation is faced with reconstructing our government 150 years after that task was supposed to be done. Talk about procrastinators, or, talk about being left in the dark by those who profited. Either way, it still has to be done and that is what we are engaged in. So what is reconstruction about, and what does it require, and where do we start? What are the conditions we were left with, coming out of the Civil War? This conversation is being reposted from a private discussion as I try to unravel the situation for people in Oregon, but the same exact conditions apply to people living in any state of the Union that was a state prior to 1861, so listen up, folks. This is Reconstruction 101. The argument as you perceptively point out the crux, is the effect of the Repatriation Act and where that left us, and the continuing operation of the territorial state of state in Oregon instead of the American state of state government we intended, which was rolled over and became inoperable because the reconstruction was never finished. You have a multitude of business entities operating on two separate levels. You have the Federation of States and the Confederation of their States of State in operation from 1781 to 1861. That's our intact original American government. The Confederation operated the States of America, also called the Federal Republic, or simply, the Federal Government, during those same years. When the Confederation broke apart into North and South factions, the States of America, our part of the federal government, was left without quorum and could no longer function, either. Those portions of our original and federal governments both disappeared, the Confederation and the States of America, Federal Republic, the Confederation operated, both had to be, reconstructed, and neither one have been. Since the Confederation was inoperable without Reconstruction, the members of the Confederation were not operable, either. The members of the Confederation were the original American states of states, like the state of Oregon. The property, assets, and interests of the state of Oregon were rolled over into the Oregon State Land Trust, and the new, substituted territorial state of state came in to do business for Oregon as an emergency measure. It was at this time that all the states of the Union prior to 1860 were compelled to create new state-of-state state constitutions in order to create a contract between their state e Oregon, and the territorial state-of-state state organization the state of Oregon being substituted for the original American entity doing business as the state of Oregon. The history of this is the same in every state that was a state prior to the Civil War. Same exact process, same exact nomenclature. So let's go back to the Repatriation Act. What were these men, repatriating, too? As they were all mustered out of the state of state members of the Confederation and not the actual states of Union, they were, repatriated, back to where they came from. But the Confederation was gone. There was no, place, for these men to return to. Wrap your minds around this. All the muster lists from the Civil War were compiled by the original American states of state organizations. They came from the state of New York and the state of Ohio and the state of North Carolina, which were all rolled into state trusts after the war purportedly, ended, New York State, and, Ohio State, and so on, replaced the original state of state organizations. So all these men who were repatriated after the Civil War became state trust assets and wards of the state. They were rolled into the state trusts. They were left in limbo until such time as the Reconstruction happened. Why? Because you can't get from Wisconsin to South Dakota without passing through Minnesota. You can't get from the state of Wisconsin to Wisconsin until or unless the Reconstruction takes effect without passing through the Wisconsin State Trust. Those of us who didn't fight in the war were not repatriated in this fashion and remained free to operate our states of the Union, but approximately 9 million Americans were cashiered by the Repatriation Act and they and their descendants have been identified as wards of the state of state ever since. All, pending Reconstruction, which we, the only ones who could do it, didn't know about. We thought it had already been done. So here we are at this late date. People are still milling around, confused. Hardly anyone realizes just how complex and nasty all this is, even among those who know that the Reconstruction is still hanging. What has to happen? Those who can do so, have to rebuild the state's Oregon, and then, reconstruct, the state of Oregon and collapse the Oregon State Trust and replace, the, territorial state of Oregon. 
At the same time, as the states reconstruct their own state of state organization, e.g., the state of Oregon, these entities have to repopulate the Confederation and begin operating the States of America organization that was responsible for the Federal Republic under the Constitution for the United States of America. The States of America, our American part of the federal government, was a subcontractor of the Confederation. So in order to reconstruct the federal government, we also have to reconstruct the Confederation, and in order to reconstruct the Confederation, we have to first assemble the states of the Union. Which is what we are doing now. States reconstruct the states of states, the states of states repopulate the Confederation, the Confederation reboots the states of America, and the states of America acts as controller of the federal government. It is the lack of this controller position that has led to the many problems we have, so we should all be highly motivated to get our ducks in order without further ado.